I've got all the elements of the drawing we need to put together the uh, final drawing. So what we'll do is we'll piece it together just on the on the right hand side here. So rather than destroy this stuff, because we might use it again sometime else, another time, we'll copy what we need. So if we copy this column and return, base point anywhere, just drag it to the side and click again. Okay, now let's draw a line down from the uh, the corner of the flange here. So we'll change to the elevations layer now. So elevation, because this is in the background, and we'll take a line from this corner and drag it down about this distance. We're looking at about, say, 1500 millimeters. So let's, let's do that. Let's just say it's going to be 1500. Okay, press return to stop. And then we'll copy that line onto the other corners of the flanges. So copy, pick the line and return. Base point, top end here, destination, click, destination, click, destination, click. Return to stop. Okay, while we're while we're in control of this, let's draw a line down from the middle to help us copy this across. So this is just a temporary line. So get line and go from the middle of the web there and just drag it down. Return to stop. This beam shape, sorry, this column shape has done its job. That can be deleted. Okay, now copy the larger beam section, return, base point is the end of that center line that we left in, destination point perpendicular to this center line, return to stop. Okay, now delete that temporary middle line. Okay, so that's the flange of the, the steel there. The next beam is going to come in at this side. So we'll copy this across. And remember we started off with it in line, which is what you'd expect. If you were building a floor on top of these two beams, the tops of them have to be in line with each other. Okay, press return because I picked all the objects and then drag over probably about this far. Okay, press return to stop. Right, firstly we'll draw the plate sitting against the flange here. We could copy the lines, that would work. So if we copy these two lines, return, the base point is the corner here, and take those perpendicular and return. The thickness of the plates is 10 millimeters. So we'll offset by 10 millimeters, take the side of this column flange, and pick again. Now zoom in because the, the bits we want to be left with are quite small here. Okay, press escape to get rid of offset. Pick the newest line and change that onto layer connection plate. Okay, now get your trim command and pick the three green lines. Well, actually, it's, it's trimming already, even though I, I've had it selected. So I'll escape there just so we take it from the start. Trim, pick the three green lines there. One, two, three, return. And then trim off the end of this line, end of that, end of this, and end of that. Okay, now we need to project lines for the actual steel beam. So if you get a line from corner there to perpendicular and return, then copy the line we've just drawn, return. The base point is the end of that line, destination one, two, 
3 and return. Okay, the final thing we need to do is indicate where the holes go through plate and flange. Okay, so we could project all the way from there. That would work okay. So if we take a line from the intersection, well actually let's move them a bit closer, they're a long way away. Let's move these three holings and return and we'll just let ortho do the work here pick a base point round about this position and let's just take them a bit closer to do the work okay everything else over here is rubbish now we can delete it so if you if you select and then delete okay we can get in a bit closer now and we'll change to the holdings layer and we want to draw from intersection here to perpendicular to here so it's a line from intersection to perpendicular return return again line from intersection to perpendicular return now that's where the hole is and we want to indicate that as a dash line but we don't need these bits of the line so we trim those off so trim use the green line as the cutter and return and we take away one two press escape now to, to indicate that there's some kind of fixing going through there we would just take a line through so we can use this one so click on the line take the grip and drag it through till it just pokes out the other side then shorten that line so you click it again take this grip this time don't let your object snaps touch anything else and if you bring your cursor to round about this position then escape okay so that's nearly ready we just need to indicate these two lines as dash lines so I want to change their line type okay so if I click both those lines and then go to the properties panel here and look for the line type option okay the line type I want to use isn't available yet so I click other and then this looks a bit like it does with the layers we load a new line type and this time I want to use hidden to and OK and then select hidden to and OK now that line these lines haven't changed yet I better just make sure that they do change so let's do that again see they haven't actually changed they're still saying they're by layer so I've clicked them again drop the selector down there hidden two is now available looks fine press escape so we're indicating those with a broken line the dashes there are a bit small okay so if we want to see a, a bit more a bit more gap in those dashes we use a command called LTS so LTS return okay it's saying the size of one there let's just change it to 2 and that just doubles the size of the gaps okay and then we want to have this these three lines copied to here and here in line with the other holdings so we copy 1, 2, 3 return the base point for the copy is the center of this circle and you can take it to the center here and the center here press return to finish and then delete those items that are left over so the drawing is very nearly finished and perhaps these lines are a wee bit long on this side so I'm going to use the stretch command there so that shortens to S and return 
capture with a crossing window, that's the green shape of a window. Return. Base point can be anywhere. Ortho is still on and you should it's, it's not easy to see because I'm going back on the line but the, the length of the, the dash line up here is how far that line is going to stretch back. Okay, that looks a bit more comfortable. Okay, the uh, the last thing I want to do here is uh, draw on little kind of uh, cut lines to show where the where the, the the to indicate that the steel carries on in these directions, and we'll also fill the the end of this column with some hatching because it's kind of being sliced through in front of our view. Okay, so we'll change layers now, and we'll use um, I think we'll use annotate, but we'll change the color of the lines because this is a bit this will be a bit too strong. Okay, so we'll draw these in, and easiest way to do this just draw a line across the end of the column there. Okay, press escape to stop the line command click the line and just extend it a bit on either side and escape and then we need the little joggle in here the, the kind of break symbol okay so it just lines again okay and well for this one we'll need to use the nearest object snap okay so you can type in that we just want to use it twice here so N E A return so I'll start the joggle here, I'll turn ortho off, and I'm just drawing this by eye, it doesn't have to be an accurate type of thing. Okay, so I'm just drawing the joggle marker, and I want to come back to a nearest point, so it's N, E, A, and return, and click there. Press return to stop, and then trim using these two lines, return, chop away this one. Okay, press escape and we'll keep these on the annotate layer but I don't want them to end up white. They'll end up with too strong a line in the end. So I'll, I'm going to select them and I'm changing their color to red. Okay, all will become clear later on when we set up the, the pen settings. Okay, we need a copy of that at the bottom end of the of the the, the drawing. So we'll copy, capture what you've just drawn, and return. Base point, to the end point there, to the end point here, and you can also drop a copy at the end point here. Okay, and then all we need to do is rotate this one up by 90 degrees. So rotate, capture these shapes again, and return. The base point is the end of the pale blue line. So I'm placing my cursor on that line, and it's finding the end point. Okay, and the rotation there would be 90, and return. Okay, that looks maybe a little bit long in this direction. So if I turn ortho on and object snaps off, I can stretch that down a wee bit. Similarly here, stretch it back up a wee bit. And that looks okay. Escape to stop. Okay, and the final thing I said we should do is fill this shape with some solid fill hatching. Okay, so we'll change to the solid layer. Okay, then hatch. It's, we need to make sure it's going to use the solid pattern. So where it says pattern here, I'll change to solid. I want to select the objects to fill. And I can pick the column section, the beam section, and return. Okay, the solid fill hatching 
usually behaves itself and go behaves itself and goes to the very back of the drawing so it can see the pink line and the blue line on top of it so that's looking fairly tidy we've now got the uh, kind of finishing of the drawing to do which involves dimensioning and annotation and our page setup so this is a convenient time to stop the video to move on to the next portion <laughs>